right the answer to the Simpson brain teaser? Nobody. Gary Selty trying to do it this weekend. Kelly Brown almost did it. He went to the finals at the first three races in 78. Won two of them. Lost, ironically, right here to Don Garland. It took a legend to beat a guy like Kelly Brown, let me tell you. Well, a little cleanup going on on the racetrack. Look at the throng here. We're going to take a look at some of the earlier qualifying highlights and top fuel from this 28th running of the Mac Tools Gator Nationals. There was some sensational activities you can well imagine that's joe amato the keystone valvoline race car he has already advanced here in round one this was in qualifying it was his last qualifying effort we had already seen kenny Bernie go out and shut off to a 466 look at this right down broadway 459 low elapsed time number one qualifier 316 blazing miles an hour also in qualifying, this is Gary Selzy, the Team Winston machine owned by Alan Johnson. It was the last qualifying round. He was not in the field. A little pressure here for the boys, and all he does is go out and goes down a 460 pass. Little smoke, but hey, they had all night to fix it. That's a lot better than having two weeks to fix it, which would have been the case if they not qualified. Larry Dixon, speaking of not qualifying, this is the Miller Lite team machine, and on the last shot, he wasn't in, burns out, breaks something, pulls over. That's like taking your Winston Cup car behind the wall. Here is Doug Herbert against Tommy Johnson Jr. Herbert, the snap-on tools machine. He's going to make the tour this year. Tommy Johnson Jr. sponsored by John Costanza. Number six on the best-selling business book list called the Quantum Leap. Tommy Johnson tried to make that Quantum Leap into the field, and he did. How about that, TJ? The demand flow machine is in the program here this weekend. Let's get down to the starting line right now. A guy that's had a pretty busy weekend, Brad Anderson, and that bespectacled Casey Spurlock. Brad Anderson, we've been talking about the parity of the lanes this morning. You have the dubious distinction of having not one but two fuel cars go up and down these lanes. Have you seen any difference all weekend long? No, we haven't seen a bit. As a matter of fact, my funny car, which is new to the game, ran an 01 in both lanes back to back. So you couldn't ask for better. We've had phenomenally nice weather. Great for spectators and racers. But Brad, as you know, the weather here can play a big factor in, in this event. If the weather changes between rounds, don't you think that it's going to be the team that can really stay in touch with those, those tuning decisions for the weather here that can get to the final round and win this race? Well, I think that's very important, but we didn't see the, the track degraded at all from, from temperature yesterday. Great. Thank you very much, Brad. Let's take a look at that cleanup. Let's go to Bob Fry. Hey, they both had glasses. Only one of them had socks on, though. How about that? Brad Anderson, by the way, took his son Randy, ran a 501, 503, 502, and 509. Really an activity. Cruz Pedregon, by the way, our number one qualifier in the funny car category here this weekend at 496. And WJ led a star pack field at 692, and he ran almost. Almost. Well, you know. There's Alan Johnson. And the driver, Gary Selzy, up on the starting line. And that's Pat Dakin, longtime runner out of Ohio. Patty qualified number 14 at a 479. And Gary Selzy smoking him in the team Winston, and that's no goal. Qualified at a 466. So they're going to back up Selzy looking to win his third straight here at the start of the 97 season. I mean, we go to every race to win. Um, no question about it. We went to Pomona to win it. We went to Phoenix to win it. We're here to win this one. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. But you have to set your sights high and uh, try not to settle for anything less. Hey, Steve, this team really only made one good run in qualifying. Is that going to play on them here in this opening round? Yes, Bob, I think it will. Uh, there were several other cars, including Tony Schumacher, who qualified very high. Got to remember, Friday morning, it was cool, it was perfect, a little bit of headwind like we have now. But yeah, I think it will have an effect, yeah. And let me tell you, Selzy, had he not qualified, that would have been like falling off the Empire State Building emotionally. I think I'd rather not qualify if I had my choice of the two, but hey, that's a personal preference. There's Alan Johnson. His late brother, Blaine, of course, went to the finals, won this race just a year ago. Dagan up in smoke, little pump, little bang, but 
right on down the racetrack and the lane goes Gary Selzy Team Winston 471 301 miles per hour as they advance they will take on Jim Head a little irony right there as that pair will meet up in the next round Jim Head won his first championship in a long while with the help of Alan Johnson last year Casey what do you see from those lanes down there a couple of guys smoking on both sides is that the track or the cars what do you think well again I think that's the weather conditions changing here a little bit this morning the weather has changed since we started the first round of top fuel the clouds have been coming in they've been going out if you make that decision to run down the lane when the clouds are out it changes the track conditions can really affect you here not as much the track but what you've done to compensate for the weather that's Tommy Johnson Jr., the demand flow machine. John Costanza owns a business that is known around the world for helping companies improve their business. Here's a guy known around the world for running monster speeds. This is your reigning Winston champ. You're on board with the king of speed. Nice to see TJ here this weekend, and here comes the first guy to do 300. Did it right here at this ballpark. That is such a neat shot from our onboard camera. Crack here noted for those big mile per hour runs. He ran 300 here back in 1992. Kenny and everybody else loves coming to a fast track. If it's a normal Gainesville weekend where it's cool, uh, 320 would probably be in jeopardy in my opinion. But if it's hot, then we'll be, you know, the 313, 315 range, somewhere like that will be pretty normal. And four low 460s will be the numbers probably at that stage so uh, it so much depends on the weather and the atmosphere and the, the track conditions Steve we kind of get jaded after a while they go if the weather's not right you're only going to run 315 316 ho hum that's that very talented team under the watchful eye of Dale Armstrong and here he is on the tour for the next couple of races TJ Jr. the demand flow racing Bernstein runs 4.68, 303 miles an hour, used up some parts, but that's okay. He's got lots of them. 4.75, the last number on the right, that's the reaction time. 4.00 would be perfect. Kenny Bernstein's going to round number two. Don't forget, if you'd like to read about all the exploits of all the racers here, you can join NHRA and get 48 issues of National Dragster, a jacket patch, a pin, a decal, a rule book, all for $57 a year. So come on, call in, sign up now. We'll send you that T-shirt there, the new Membership 97 T-shirt. There's the number on your screen. Operators are standing by. I always wanted to say that. Or we'll send you the Drag Racing 95 video or do it on the World Wide Web. The World Wide what? Web. I knew that. Oh, look at Kelsey against Jim Head and Joe Mott will take on the winner of this race. Bob Vandergriff Jr. going off against Shelly Anderson. Steve, so far in this round, has it been pretty much what you expected we'd see? Uh, pretty much exactly what I expected. If you look, the cars from the top half of the ladder are advancing. Kristen Powell, who barely got in, went out first round. That was fairly predictable. Kenny Bernstein with that solid 468. He and Gary Selzy are going to be the story throughout this event and maybe many more to come. Well, if Kenny Bernstein's the king of speed, Shelly might be the queen of speed. This baby really hums in high gear. She ran 471 in qualifying. Bob Vandergriff in the Jersey's car, 472. He, of course, had a great run at Phoenix in qualifying, and then he bowled out there in the second round. It'll be an interesting matchup right here. Two evenly matched cars. The only real upsets in this round, Mike Dunn, number 10, took out Schumacher, and Jim had upset Connie Coletta. Great look at Bob Vandergriff Jr., who went up in one of those jet planes earlier this week and went 900 miles an hour. 
Hey, KC, I've got to ask you, that red light start that he had in Phoenix, that was a nasty foul out. Is he thinking about that right now? Absolutely he is, Bob. Right now, Bob has that red light on his mind. That could be the difference in this first round. Although Rick Castle has really brought the performance of this team around, you could see a late start by Bob because he's going to try to overcompensate. We'll see. Indeed, we will. Oh! How about that? Well, you were pretty close, KC, but it was Shelly Anderson that fouled out. She runs a 479 Vandegrift. The jersey's active wear. They're going to stay active for at least one more round. 477, 296. Could use a little active wear there to act as parachutes right about now. 479, the reaction time for Bob Vandegrift. Shelly, bold. Big time. A 4.00 is perfect. She had a 3.00 reaction time. How about that? A red light start for Shelly Anderson and Bob Vandergriff. Now you live by the red light and you die by the red light. And we got the first pair of the funny cards as we're just humming along. It's that McDonald's Ziploc car. First number one qualifying effort since the Winter Nationals of 96. Tony Pendergon struggled a bit. He's in the nine hole. There's Anderson Hoover. You got to keep your eye on that Tim Wilkerson, the number five guy. That Napa car can fly. Hoffman was in the four second range. Four struggled. If you can consider a 5 0 struggling. And Dean Scusa, again, awesome. A bundle of 5 0s this weekend. There's a great look at the Mickey D's machine of Joe Gibbs. He came out and gave the team a little pep talk yesterday. Bruce Pendergon, it's been a long while since he's been sitting on top of the qualified field. Better than a year, I talked to him yesterday. He didn't even remember the last time he was number one. These cars can throw you a curveball now and then, but the key is stay with it. Uh, you know, and stay confident, and, and the guys are working really hard, working late at night, and, uh, you know, I'm confident we're going to get the car going, and we'll look at, look back and say these first two races were just, just took us extra runs to get it together this year. Bruce Pedregon's last round win, not race win, round win, Dallas, last year. There's the CFR Creasy Family Racing team entry. Gary Bolger up. It's the match racers against the highly financed team right here. Steve Evans, you've seen Gary Bolger for a long while. Get down tough racetracks. Can he handle the Mickey D's car here? Not unless Cruz makes a mistake or uh, possibly the car breaks something. Uh, Bolger will try to leave on him, and he'll hang there until he's pretty sure he's beaten. He'll shut it off to save parts in the duel and be back at the next race. They run on prize money. They barely qualified, and believe me, had they not got that seven grand, they might have had to go back to Chicago. By the way, folks, he said they run on prize money, not on prize money. At least I hope that's what he said. Well, it ain't over till it's over, and for Gary Bolger, it's over. Cruz with an 09, 304 miles an hour, and the McDonald's Pontiac Firebird, great-looking automobile. He's our first funny car in round number two. More funny cars live on TNN coming up next.